Three principles for the combat with a big shield. Hello, lovely sword people. So today I want to talk with you about the combat with a big shield. More precisely, I want to talk about Marazzo's Imbracciatura. Of course, the principles I present here today are not all the things you could talk about in the combat with any big shield. But I think three is a number that is easily digestible within one lesson. So let's start right away. So just to clarify, the Imbracatura is nothing else than a strapped shield. And Imbracatura is nothing else than the straps. And the things you could learn here easily apply to the pavis or any other big shield like a triangle shield or a kite shield. It doesn't matter too much actually. So, principle number one. You want to conserve your energy, which is of course true in all fighting and in all martial arts, but especially if you have a certain amount of weight on yourself, you want to be especially careful how you move. So, with a big shield, it of course weighs quite a bit and the weight is distributed in a way that, especially out here, it presents a huge lever on your left shoulder. And I see it all the time that people are standing a mile away from each other and they're already going into a position like this with a really great load on the left shoulder, maybe even on their back because they are already leaning forward quite, quite a bit. The hamstrings are tight and now they are closing in. Instead, what you want to do is to conserve your energy until the last necessary moment. And for that, you can use Marozzo's Coda Longa e Alta with the Imbracciatura. With a fairly straight up posture, the left shoulder nice and relaxed, left arm on your left side, so there's basically no load on your left shoulder. The same with your right sword, still fairly low, so it's retracted from your opponent on the one hand, and on the other, your right shoulder is fairly relaxed as well. And from here, you can get closer to your opponent super easily, and then if you start the combat, you can, of course, get into these more challenging positions, get around, get low, and you should use all your athleticism when you're in a fight. But if you're out of reach, conserve your energy. Kind of in the same manner, I would advise you to be economic about all your motions, which again applies to all martial arts and in all combat as well. But especially with a big shield, you don't want to make these huge windshield wiping motions because it's a lot of weight. It is a huge tempo, a huge opportunity to attack. If I go up here, the whole of the rest of my body is easily reachable for my opponent. Instead, I want to use smaller motions and be economic about all my motions. Okay, and that brings me to my second point, which is simultaneous attack and defense, which is Again, something you would find in the single sword combat as well. And by now, you should have learned that the combat with the single sword in the Bolognese sources is the basis for all combat with any, com uh, with any companion weapon as well. So anything you can do with the single sword, you can, of course, do with the sword and a companion weapon as well. But certain companion weapons amplify certain actions in a certain way. And with the big shield, it gets much more easy to defend and attack in the same tempo. So of course, when they, for example, attack me with a mandrito, so to my upper left, it's quite easily doable for me to defend myself and strike, for example, with a falso or with a thrust or to any other opening in that same tempo. And it's something that is actually quite hard to do with the single sword alone. But 
with the shield, it becomes much more doable. So you use it, you could use it way more often because it's way harder to defend for your opponent. Okay, and the third principle. You should use your feet actively in a fight, which is again something you should always strive for. But in the case of fighting an opponent with a big shield, you should walk towards their shield side. So my right side or their left side, if they are right handed. Why is that? Well, it's a principle that's found in Marozzo over and over again. And the reasoning is that you move away from their sword. So they actually lose a bit of reach while you turn and still keep your reach on them. The second reason is that your shield is turned towards them, which makes this quite a safe move. And then from there you can attack around the shield of your opponent. Because, like I said in the second point, if they attack close to your shield, it gets fairly easy to just defend with your shield, trust your defense and then attack simultaneously. So all your attacks should be uh, aimed towards an actual target, an actual opening, never towards their shield. Okay, and that's it for this first basic lesson. Three principles for the combat with the sword and the big, uh, big shield. Of course, there's a lot more to be said. Leave your favorite principles and techniques in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.